Welcome to our channel, where we delve into the world of classic and legendary automobiles. Today, we have a special episode dedicated to a car many consider the greatest racing car of all time, the Porsche 917. This stunning race car not only secured Porsche its first victory at Le Mans, but also dominated endurance racing, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire Porsche Motorsport to this day, including the modern Porsche 963 race car. Join us as we explore the story of the 917, the car that conquered the world, made history, and became an inspiration for generations of Porsche racing cars. From its humble beginnings on the drawing boards in Stuttgart to its victorious run through the pouring rain on the legendary Lutz Sart circuit in 1970. Discover how Porsche overcame early challenges and entered an era of dominance on the world's racetracks. Don't miss this thrilling look at the legend of the Porsche 917. The Porsche 917, the greatest racing car of all time? The stunning race car that helped Porsche win Le Mans and dominate endurance racing. From securing Porsche its debut Le Mans win to speed records and North American victories, this is the story of the 917. One that conquered the world, made history, and has been an inspiration for Porsche Motorsport ever since, including today's Porsche 963 race car. The rain fell hard across the legendary Lusart circuit during the 1970 running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, the storm soaking the track and making driving conditions at this most arduous of events even more challenging. It was amid these dramatic conditions that a future motorsport legend well and truly arrived. There have been many great Porsche racing cars over the years, but none quite like the 917. With British driver Richard Atwood and German teammate Hans Hermann at the wheel of a 917K, a car that little more than a year previously was a mere sketch on a drawing board in Stuttgart, Porsche secured its first ever win at the greatest of all endurance races. It was a victory that would herald decades of dominance in the sport for Porsche. The Beginning of the Porsche 917 Legend In 1968, the governing body of motorsport, the FIA, raised the engine displacement limit from 3 to 5 liters for the World Sports Car Championship. It immediately limited the competitiveness of the then Porsche racing car of the time, the 908. However, Ferdinand Peach, head of development for Porsche, saw it as an opportunity. His vision was to create the best racing car ever built, one that would sweep the opposition. And that it would eventually do, and in devastating fashion. In an intensive period of design and build that began in the spring of 1968, the new car took just 10 months to be readied for its public reveal at the 1969 Geneva Motor Show. With a chassis designed by Helmuth Bott and engine developed by Hans Mesger, who in the 1980s designed the Porsche-built tag turbo Formula 1 engine for the all-conquering McLaren MP4-2, 25 cars were made for homologation purposes. Eventually, some 65 examples of the Porsche 917 would go on to be built in total. The race car itself was developed in two versions, the 917K, for Kurs equals short in German, and the 917LH, Langheck equals long tail, although it would be the former that would predominate. In its first season, the 917, which was powered by a 4.5 liter flat 12 that produced 588 PS, struggled with handling, caused by aerodynamic lift at high speed. It won just one race, the Zeltwig 1000 km at Austria's Osterreichering, driven by the Swiss Joe Siffert and German co-pilot, Kurt Ahrens Jr. Porsche wins the 24 hours of Le Mans, at last. But these early teething issues did not deter Porsche. For the following season, the downforce issues were fixed, chiefly by deploying a wedge-shaped tail made of aluminium. This would be the car that took the World Sports Car Championship by storm. After debuting at the 24 Hours of Daytona, the 917 racing cars run by the JW Automotive and Porsche Salzburg teams would go on to win 9 out of the 10 races in the 1970 season. 
while it gained an eye-opening 1-2 finish for the JW Automotive Cars in that Daytona opener, the greatest victory of them all was that stunning debut Porsche Le Mans win, courtesy of the Porsche Salzburg team. The number 23-917K of Atwood and Herman, dressed in the now unmistakable red and white Salzburg livery, covered 343 laps, 4,607.811 kilometers, in the pouring rain at Lusart over the 24 hours. Lumans is a race where everything goes right, or it doesn't. In those days, the 24 hours was more like an endurance drive than a race, remembers Richard Atwood, who drove not knowing that he had been diagnosed with mumps, which meant he could only drink milk during the race. To win Le Mans with Porsche and Hans came fully unexpectedly. Hans and I were simply a dream team. By the end of the season, the 4.5-liter engine had been bored out to 5 liters, capable of hitting 62 miles per hour from a standing start in just 2.7 seconds, a figure that would keep even the fastest supercars of today on its toes. The era of Porsche dominance of the world's racetracks had well and truly arrived. 917, a record-breaking Porsche at Le Mans. Over the ensuing three seasons, the 917 would go on to have an unprecedented run of victories in its many forms. These would include some of the most famous and recognizable Porsche race cars ever made. For the 1971 season, the Porsche Salzburg team was replaced by the Martini Racing Team as the second Porsche Works team, although they had competed alongside the Salzburg outfit at Le Mans in 1970. Finishing in second place with France's Gerard LaRousse and Germany's Willy Kausen driving a 917 LH. The car itself looked somewhat different too, having now grown two vertical fins on the tail. The result was an even faster car. Seven races out of the 11 race series were won in 1971. And once again Le Mans was the scene of an outstanding triumph, perhaps the most stunning performance that the revered circuit has ever seen. In its distinctive martini racing colors, the number 22 car of Dutchman Geis van Lennep and Austrian helmet Marco smashed all records on their way to victory. The two drivers averaged 222 kilometers per hour across the 24 hours of the race, covering a distance of 5,335 kilometers. Over 700 kilometers more than the winning Porsche 917K the year before. So incredible was this performance, it was a record that would not be beaten until 2010. This was also a race that saw the appearance of further variants of the now all-conquering 917. One was the Martini International 917LH, with its revised suspension setup and new bodywork, such as partially enclosed wheel covers. It took pole position in qualifying, but in the race itself, it failed to make it to the checkered flag. More famously, another of that year's Le Mans 917 entrance has gone on to become of the most recognizable Porsche race car liveries of all time. The Martini International Pink Pig Porsche 917-20, which featured the names of cuts of meat all over its bodywork, was a unique 917 in many ways. This special one-off had a wider body than its earlier siblings and was designed by engineers with the aim to combine the stability of the 917K with the low drag of the 917L. While it would finish a creditable fifth at Le Mans, it would never race again in anger. That standout pink livery, however, is still adored by Porsche fans to this day. The Can AM 917-30 gets ready to conquer America. We'll save the most powerful 917 to last. By 1973, the 917 was coming to the end of its glittering reign as the king of the racetrack. At the end of the 1972 season, such was the domination that the car had on the World Sports Car Championship that the FIA decided to react, banning its 5-liter, 12-cylinder engine. But there was to be one more challenge that Porsche wanted to take on. Besides Formula One and the World Sports Car Championship, the Can AM Racing Series of North America was one of the most keenly contested and well supported racing car championships of the era. By 1973, North America had grown to be the biggest market for Porsche sports cars. 
And now there was a perfect opportunity for Porsche to cement its growing reputation in Can-Am Racing 2. The 917 had already been competing in the series since 1970 and 1972. It even won the overall title in the form of George Falmer's Penske Racing 917-10. But Porsche wanted to go bigger and even better. It came in the shape of the 917-30, a car that combined brawn with beauty. It looked like no other 917 seen before. The end of an era, the Porsche 917 is retired from racing. Much of the success of the 917-30 can be put down to the input of the man who drove it. American Mark Donahue was not just a talented racing driver, but also, as an engineer, helped develop the 917-30 for the Can-AM series. The figures it produced are very bit as mind-blowing today as they were half a century earlier. Powered by a 5.4-liter V12 turbocharged engine, it produced 1014 PS and had a top speed of 385 kilometers per hour. In contrast to racing at Le Mans, where aerodynamic drag had to be reduced to increase top speed on the long straights, downforce was on the menu for the Can-AM 917-30, helping it transfer all that power from the V12 onto the track surface in as efficient and secure as way as possible. And if that didn't already intimidate the rest of the field, the muscly, open-top design of its body and the famous blue and yellow Sunoco livery also turned heads very quickly. Inevitably, the 917 38 up all the other cars in its path, with Mark Donahue winning six out of eight races in the 1973 Can-AM series on his way to the championship title, the other two races, coincidentally, were won by one of the car's predecessors, the Porsche 917-10. Sadly, that's where the road ended for 917 as a competitive entity, as the car's commanding performance once again led to new regulations for the following Can-AM season. But what a way to sign off for what many believe is the world's greatest ever racing car. It's a legacy that continues today in the form of today's Porsche 963, a spiritual successor to the 917, and a race car that Porsche sees as its new motorsport hero.